We have just spent the last week living in this tiny home on wheels. The last seven days have been full of ups and downs. I think we might be really, really good at van life and having the best time. From the highest highs to the lowest lows. Avalanche warnings, everything's closed. It's like a blizzard. The weather has taken a turn. From freezing in the snow to looking at incredible wildlife as we drove one of the most beautiful roads in the entire world. But this entire journey started a week ago, right here, when we picked up the keys to our camper van. All right, we have to like walk around and take photos and stuff. Before we even get out of the lot, I've come to contend with one of the first problems. I need to go to the toilet. Nothing around here is open, so we need to go find somewhere that that can happen. You need to pee, I need coffee. Tim Hortons? It's a Canadian road trip. Turn left onto 115 Avenue, then turn left onto Bridgeview Drive. currently about 1 p.m. and this might be a terrible idea but we are thinking if we can drive about six hours to a little town called Revelstoke that would be amazing. Originally we were just planning on going to Kelowna or Kamloops but in about a week we're going to be in Kamloops for a very different reason so we kind of figured why not skip over that for now and get us as close as possible to Banff which is where we're hoping to be tomorrow. what you picture when you think Canadian van life. I didn't expect it to be this snowy. I also didn't think we were going to go through mountains. <laughs> this day is changing. We started in like a massive downpour with grey skies. All of a sudden we were in the snow-capped mountains and now it's like clear and we're in some fields. It's so nuts to me that that has all happened within the span of about three hours. I think we are officially halfway now. So it's time to start thinking about where we're going to stay tonight. We have heard of a bunch of free and paid services that can help you find free places to stay when you're in a camper van. I think the Canadians call it boondocking. Is that what it's called? Which is weird. The plan initially was to call into the information centre in Revelstoke, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be shut by the time we get in. <laughs> if I'm all the way up or not. Let's go find out. You can tell we're amateur van lifers. We couldn't find the fuel cap. 
Yeah, nice. I have to back up though. I went way too far forward. <laughs> Literally had to get the manual out to find that. <laughs> it's up to $80. So, pretty much $100 flat Canadian to get it back up to full. We only really just cross the halfway mark of the fuel but now we have enough to if we need to recharge the batteries we can have the heater on and things like that so we don't have to be worried about it i googled free places we can park in revelstoke and there is a hotel that apparently offers one night complimentary there but their website's kind of confusing and there's a chance they may be shut for the season it's the only place i know of though so i think that's where we're gonna go try one way to find out Maybe at where we're going to be stopping, but I have to go in and ask. <laughs> I think we might be really, really good at van life. We just got our very first ever night for free. She said P1 or P3. It's pretty chill right now, so... Where's P1 or P3? <laughs> also, if you're hungry, we have bananas or porridge. Maybe we're not good at van life. It's so cool waking up to this. It's just the thickest fog I've ever seen in my life. So did I. Slept like a log. Couldn't hear. It was like you could only really hear the birds chirping and then it was dead silent. Dead silent. And the bed is really comfy and I stayed way warmer than I thought I would all night long. But we need coffee. We do have supplies to be able to make, the, make it ourselves, but you have to do it outside. And we're covered in snow. So neither of us really want to do that. <laughs> First up, coffee. <laughs> Hope everything is secure. I tried my best. Okay, a few things that are confusing us. A four-way stop sign. I don't think we have them in Australia. I'm assuming it means whoever gets there first stops and then goes first. Luckily, we're the only ones around at the moment, so we're just stopping and going. Revelstoke is a very, very cute, quaint, tiny town, and it seems like every single person that's staying here right now is inside of a coffee shop. So they are all full, and it's 8.30 on a Monday morning. I think we're gonna have to go to Tim Hortons. What do you think? It means I can get another ice cap. <laughs> You're obsessed. So we bailed on Tim Hortons and we've come to a really cute cafe called La Baguette and we have a couple of bagels and coffees coming. So that's saying that there's avalanche warnings between us and where we want to go of Banff. We might get an update at 3 p.m. where the roads are clear, but it looks like we're spending the day here in Revelstoke. <laughs> One thing I love about van life already is the fact that we were just in a cafe and like five steps, now we're home. And we can move this home to the supermarket where we're gonna go next. 
and then we'll walk in and out and be home. <laughs> Stocked up. We do technically have a like cooler refrigerator system in here, but we kind of went for everything that doesn't need it because it seems like one more thing we don't have to worry about. I'm very, very conscious of using power, so yeah. I don't want to have anything that's draining it that shouldn't be draining it. So we got a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> so I'm checking the Drive BC website to see if we can drive. It looks like they're expecting the avalanche control measures to be done by 2 p.m. So I'm assuming it would just be an update on how that's going. Looks like 2 or 3 p.m. we might be able to head out. It's a three hour drive, so that means we'll be getting in at like 6 or 7 again. Considering we have to kill time here for we don't know how long, we thought it would be a really good time to kind of think about what we want to see while we're here in the Rockies. It is incredible nature, we know that the landscapes are nuts, but apparently there are also animals walking around everywhere. So, we thought it would be fun to make a list of all of the animals that we really want to see for this entire week throughout Banff National Park, Jasper National Park, and see how many we can cross off. I think if we can get to like 60-70% of those, I'd be happy, but I'd love to see them all. Alright. Yeah. Moose. Moose. Bear. This one might be a long shot, but a beaver? A woodland caribou. Alright, let's check the map, see if we can get on the road. <laughs> Starting route to Banff. We just got to Lake Louise where we're planning to spend the night before we explore Banff tomorrow. There is a lot of mixed information online of where you can and can't park your camper van. And also the pricing is all different. So we got here to what's meant to be the overflow car park of Lake Louise where you're supposed to be able to camp for a fee. The fee is a lot more than we thought it was. We don't have enough cash. There's no ATMs open and there's nowhere else around here that we can park. And things are just closing because it's like 8.30 on a Monday. So we are literally gonna put every dollar of Canadian cash we have on the envelope, slip it in with a little note that says, we're really sorry, when the ATM's open tomorrow, we will come and pay you the rest of the money and just hope we don't get fined. I feel like they should understand because there's nobody else here. We want to pay, we're trying to pay, we just don't have the means to pay, so. That's the predicament we're in. Van life is so stressful. This would definitely be the things that you get used to. The more times that happens, the more comfortable you'd be. Like we went into a pub and everyone's like, just park here, it's fine. Even though there's like a million no camping signs everywhere. We're just like, we haven't done that before. So it's very scary. Travel tip for if you're doing van life in Revelstoke, come to the Sutton place and you get a free campsite for the night. It's so nice here. The views are amazing. Beautiful views to work up to. And it's free. That's crazy. Drive BC no longer says anything about avalanche control, so I think we're good to go. I guess we just go and if the, if the roads close, like they have those barrier things that would be, what are they called? Bollards? Since when do you have to pay for air? Am I wrong? This is always free in Australia. Okay. The highs and lows of van life. We're in the thick of it now, Puddin. 